So this lab is called the Types of Bonds Lab. And the purpose of this lab is to categorize compounds based on their physical properties. So we're going to run a series of tests on six different compounds, and then we are going to put them into two groups based on their physical properties. So for your hypothesis, I want you to write two sentences. And I want you to write, both sentences are going to look similar. They're going to say, I think that blank compounds will have similar properties because, and then you're going to give a reason. And then you're going to write that same statement for the other group. So for instance, so for here are our six compounds that we're going to be testing today. So calcium chloride, urea, sucrose, potassium iodide, naphthalene, and sodium bicarbonate. I want you to take those six compounds just based on what you see here. I want you to separate them into two categories and then give a reason as to why you put them in those two categories. So you're going to say, I think that these three compounds, tell me which ones they are, will have similar properties and then give a reason and then same for the other three. Once you have that done, your procedure should come next. That should probably take up a whole page. And then here's what our data table is going to look like. So in the first column, we have our compounds. And our tests today are going to be to make notes on the appearance, notes on the solubility with water, so whether or not it dissolves. We're going to make notes on the conductivity in solution. And then we're going to look at the melting point. So appearance is going to be a description. Solubility and conductivity will be yes or no. Yes, it dissolved. No, it didn't. Yes, it conduct. No, it. Yes, it conducted. No, it didn't. And then melting point is going to be a high low. Did it melt quickly and have a low melting point, or did it take a while to melt, or did it not melt at all, and that would be a high melting point? So that's how our lab notebook is going to be set up for the types of bonds lab. So the first compound we're going to test is calcium chloride. So here's my beaker of calcium chloride, and you can make notes on its observation. So let's put some in a scupula and see what it looks like. So that's what calcium chloride looks like. So you can make notes on its appearance. Okay, now we're going to test its solubility. So I'm going to put a scoop in a test tube. And then I'm going to dissolve it with some distilled water. Stir it up. I'm going to add just a little bit more water. So it's a little cloudy, but there's no solid left at the bottom. So we can see that it dissolved, which means it would be soluble. Okay, next we're going to test the conductivity. And we're looking for, if it's conductive, it's going to be higher, it's going to be a really high number. If it's not conductive, it's going to be a really low number. And that is a very high number, so we're going to go ahead and say that that is conductive. Okay. And then finally, our last test is melting point. So I'm going to put a sample into my aluminum weigh boat and put it on my hot plate. And it is starting to burn and most definitely not melting. So we're going to say that that has a very high melting point. Okay. 
The next compound that we're gonna test is urea. So that is H4N2CO. So here's what urea looks like. And so if I scoop some up into my scoopula, that's what urea looks like. So you can make notes on its observations or notes on its appearance. Okay, let's test its solubility. So I'm gonna take some and put it in my test tube. Add some distilled water. Actually, this one I don't even need to stir that much. It already looks like it's dissolved. Go ahead and give it a stir. Definitely no solid left in the bottom. So this guy is most definitely soluble in water. And then we're gonna test its conductivity. So again, high number means it's conductive, low number means it isn't. So for a low number, we're looking for something under 500. So this is under 500. So we're gonna say that this is not conductive. So we'll take this, give it a rinse. Set that off to the side. And then our last test is going to be the melting point. So I have my hot plate and I'm gonna put a scoop on my way boat. And it is definitely melting. So this has a low melting point. Next we have sucrose. So that's C12H22O11. So take a look at what sucrose looks like. Scoop some into my scoopula. You've all probably seen this before. It's just table sugar. So let's test its solubility. Put a scoop in my test tube. Add some water. And give it a stir. Sucrose is definitely soluble. Okay, let's test its conductivity. So again, anything lower than 500 is not conductive. 55 is lower than 500, so we're gonna say that this is, that sucrose is not conductive. Okay, give it a rinse. And then finally, we're gonna test the melting point. Add some to my aluminum weigh dish. Put the weigh boat on the hot plate. 
So I don't know if you can see from the video, but the sucrose has been slowly getting kind of shiny, which makes me wonder, and that's why I'm waiting to see if it's gonna melt, because I think it's going to, because it seems to be getting a little bit more clear. You can see kind of in the middle, right here, it's definitely turning to a liquid there in the middle. So since the sucrose melted, we're gonna say that it has a low melting point. So next up is naphthalene, that's the C10H8. Now naphthalene, if you could smell it, it smells like mothballs. That's because mothballs are made of naphthalene. So it has a pretty powerful scent and that's what they look like. So we're gonna test the solubility of naphthalene. And naphthalene is most definitely not dissolving, so this guy is not soluble. Naphthalene is not soluble. Let's test its conductivity. So it's lower than 500, 47 is lower than 500, so this is not conductive, so naphthalene is not conductive. Okay, and then finally, melting point. So I'm gonna put a little bit of naphthalene on my aluminum weight dish. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my hot plate and it is melting right away. So next up is potassium iodide, so Ki. So there's our potassium iodide. And here's what it looks like. Okay, so let's test its solubility. And if we give it a stir, looks like it all dissolves, so it is soluble in water. Now if we're going to test its conductivity, so high number is conductive, low number is not conductive. We see definitely a high number, so this is definitely conductive. And then finally, melting point. I'm gonna put some on my aluminum weigh boat. And it is not melting, but it does actually, even though it doesn't look any different, it's kind of starting to smell like it's burning. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this one quits and say that it has a high melting point. And now we have sodium bicarbonate, so NaHCO3. So here's what this guy looks like. This is baking soda. So it looks just like what you'd see when you cook in your kitchen. Let's test and see if it's soluble. Sure. 
It's a little bit cloudy, but I don't really see any more solid in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that yes, this is soluble. And now we're gonna test the conductivity. And this guy is most definitely conductive. It's way over 2000, so it is conductive. And then finally, we're gonna do the melting point. So I have my aluminum weigh dish. It doesn't really seem to be doing anything at all. Again, kind of like the potassium iodide, it doesn't seem to be doing anything, but it kind of smells a little bit like it's burning. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that this one has a high melting point and we're gonna call this one quits. Okay, so you should have the appearance column filled out, but just to kind of go back and summarize, um, the solubility for calcium chloride was a yes, the conductivity was a yes, and it had a high melting point. For urea, it was soluble, it was not conductive, and it had a low melting point. For sucrose, it was soluble, it was not conductive, and it had a low melting point. For naphthalene, it had no solubility, it was not soluble in water. It was not conductive, and it had a low melting point. For potassium iodide, it was soluble in water, it was conductive, and it had a high melting point. And for sodium bicarbonate, it was soluble in water, it was conductive, and it had a high melting point. So now what I want you to do is I want you to take these six compounds and I want you to put them into two groups. And then here in a minute, we'll go over the different groups and what we can conclude from some of this information. So at the end of this lab, you should have grouped your compounds into two categories. And right now we're just gonna call them group one and group two. So group number one, which could be either of the groups, um, which we're gonna do whichever group goes with calcium chloride. So calcium chloride was in a group. With calcium chloride should have been potassium iodide and sodium bicarbonate. So then group two would have had the remaining three compounds. So we would have had um, H4N2CO, that was the urea. C12H22O11, that was the sucrose, and C10H8, so that was the naphthalene. If we were to go through and put the properties that go with each of these compounds, kind of the properties that helped us determine the groups, um, we would see kind of a pattern. So for group one, all of the group one compounds had a high melting point. They were conductive. and they were also all soluble. Now, for the group two compounds, they had very low melting points. They were not conductive. And most were soluble, with the exception of the naphthalene. And that's something we'll get into a little bit more detail later. So 
pretty much all of our compounds were soluble, but then the melting point and the conductivity really separated our compounds into two different groups. Our group one compounds have a special name. They're called ionic compounds because between those atoms and the compounds, they form ionic bonds, and we're going to talk about those more later, but they form ionic bonds, so they're called ionic compounds. All ionic compounds have a high melting point, they're conductive in solution, and they're soluble in water. Our other group of compounds are called, called covalent compounds, and that's because they form covalent bonds. Again, something we'll get into a little bit more detail later. But these are all covalent compounds because they form what are called covalent bonds. All covalent compounds have a low melting point. They're not conductive in solution. And some covalent compounds are soluble in water, others aren't, and we'll get into why more later. This was just kind of an intro. Naphthalene was our one weirdo that did not dissolve in water. Our other two did. If we look a little bit more closely as to what types of elements make up these compounds, we might also see a pattern with that as well. So if we start with our ionic compounds, and we start with calcium chloride, calcium, or calcium chloride is made up of calcium and chlorine. And so calcium, if we remember, calcium is a metal. It's on the left-hand side of the periodic table. Chlorine, being on the right-hand side of the periodic table, is a non-metal. If we look at potassium iodide, potassium, being on the left-hand side of the periodic table, is a metal. Iodine, being on the right-hand side, is a non-metal. Sodium bicarbonate is made up of more than just two elements, but that's fine. Sodium is a metal. It's on the left side of the periodic table. Hydrogen, even though it's on the left side, is actually a non-metal. Remember, we've talked about that before. Carbon is on the right side, so it's a non-metal. And oxygen is also on the right side, so it is also a non-metal. If we were to generalize what types of elements make up ionic compounds, we would say that they're metals and non-metals. We can do the same thing with our covalent compounds. So in urea, we have hydrogen, which we already said was a non-metal, nitrogen, which is also a non-metal, carbon and oxygen, which we also already said were non-metals. If we look at sucrose, we have carbon, which is a non-metal, hydrogen, a non-metal, oxygen, a non-metal. And then naphthalene, carbon, is a non-metal, and hydrogen is a non-metal. So if we were to generalize what types of elements make up our covalent compounds, these are non-metals. They are made up of non-metal elements. So all ionic compounds have a high melting point, they're conductive in solution, and they're soluble in water. All ionic compounds are made up of metals and non-metals. Covalent compounds all have a low melting point, they're not conductive in solution, and they are sometimes soluble in water, depends. All covalent compounds are made up of nonmetals. So by doing this lab, we've been able to run some tests to see that a chemical bond isn't just one thing. We have two different types of bonds because we have two different types of compounds. We have ionic bonds and we have covalent bonds, and those we will discuss more later.